This broadcast of Ellison Men is being brought to you by Texas Roadhouse in Flower Mound. Come by for our hand-cut steaks, legendary sides, and fresh baked bread. We're open till 11 o'clock, so stop by after the game. Texas Roadhouse, legendary food, legendary service. Welcome to LSMN as we prepare to bring you the Hebron Hawks versus the Marcus Marauders. Tonight is actually Hebron's homecoming game, so expect a good show up from them tonight. Yeah, so it's big for Hebron, but it's also very big for Marcus. This is a huge game for them. They have to have this win for a big staple win. If they can get this win, they show the other district teams that they can win games, especially coming off that big loss against Flower Mound. Last game, they played Plano West. They won 37-14. They came out strong with their offense. They had a good start, good quick start. I'm sure they're going to look look to do that tonight. And uh, speaking of momentum, both teams coming with, into this game with pretty large win streaks. As that kick goes out of bounds, it will put Marcus at the 40-yard line. Hebron is coming into this game with a four-win streak, and Marcus is coming in with a three-win streak. Hebron also, uh, Hebron head coach Brian Brazel is also coming into this game after just recently gaining his 150th win with the Hebron Hawks. So congratulations to him on that, and I'm sure he'll be looking to uh, expand that resume. Yeah, they're going to look to go 5-3 and three tonight and definitely show the other district opponents they can beat these top-tier teams like Marcus because they haven't, other than maybe Flowermount earlier in the year, they haven't played teams like Marcus or Louisville yet, so this could be a big game for them, especially on their home field during homecoming. And it looks like Marcus will be starting the night with Cole Welliver at quarterback as they send the man in motion. And they hand it off to number 15, a quick jet sweep. Goes for a loss of yards. I'm sorry, I called Jackson Warren Cole Welliver. That is my mistake. Yeah, I think they're just going to try to get the run game going. They like to do that. They like to run that play action type thing and go deep passes. Marcus definitely executes with those long passes. That's their go-to offense is to just try to run off the play action, get some space open downfield. Oliver looks to pass, finds his man a few yards deep for about a gain of five. And that will bring up third and long. You know, they just went to the little quick um, throw there, just trying to gain some yards back, maybe make this a little bit more of a manable third down. But even then, it's still going to be a pretty hard for third down here, and this is a big, big play here at the start of the game. Well, it Warren fakes the handoff, and pass is complete to number 17, Connor Vaughn, and that will give Marcus a first down. Yeah, just another one of those quick play action plays that just found another guy open, just open in space. They're, they're going to try to run those quick plays all night. It's, it's either those, they're going to go those quick plays and then just kind of surprise you with those deep long passes every once in a while. Marcus able to convert on a big third down there. Get them to about the 42-yard line. As Warren hands it off to Espinoza, who will get about five yards on the play there. Seems to be a flag on the play here, but barring that call, that could have been a huge run there by Espinoza. He almost got to the edge there, could have opened up some space, but only got a couple yards. A good pursuit by that Hebron defense. And it looks like this play is going to come back. I assume it was a holding call on Marcus. Yeah, that's going to set him back. That's going to be really bad start to this drive. They're basically just back to where they started this drive in the first place. And this will now bring up a first and 20 for the Marauders. They're definitely trying to get their key players in space here probably in this play, try to make something happen. You know you got three downs to work with, so I'm sure they're not worrying too much right now. And Hebron sends a three-man blitz. Warren able to escape. But not for long as he gets hit as he throws it away. I think he did just get out of the pocket there, so I don't think they're going to call intentional grounding there. Yeah, just good good defensive line movement there by Hebron. They're just able to get to the quarterback quick. They've been doing that to start the night so far, so if they can get that going, it just puts pressure on um, Jackson Warren, make, force him to make good plays. And that's kind of what you want to do against this Marcus defense, Marcus offense. 
Marcus with the three wide outs. Sends a man in motion. Fakes the handoff to Espinoza. And a quick screen pass is going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. And number 20, Walker Wells, looking for that face mask call, but it doesn't look like he's going to get one. Yeah, it did look a little iffy there, but I'm going to go with here. We got the replay here. Just going to go with, I'm pretty sure he just took him down cleanly. Ref didn't see anything. The ref was wide, right in front of that, so I'm sure he, what he saw was probably the right call. Third and 21 for the Marauders. Going with the forward wideout strategy here. As Warren drops back to pass. Just rolls out of the pocket, finds a man down deep. And that is going to be blatant pass interference on number seven, Trenton Brana. Yeah, they just pulled Dallas Dudley down there just from the back. He just, that he went corner there, just knew that he was going to make that catch if he didn't pull him down. So he just kind of went with that pull play. But I think he just went with it only thinking maybe that that is only going to be like a 15-yard penalty if that is. No, they're going to get the automatic first down. So even then, that might have been the smarter play there by Heber. And in, in high school, it's not like the NFL where pass interference is marked at the spot of the foul. Heber will get, or Marcus will get, 15-yard gain and an automatic first down here, bringing up first and 10. As they fake the handoff and go with another short screen pass to Dallas Dudley. And it looks like he might have been just short of the first down marker there. You know, just another quick screen play. There's just one of these quick plays, and they're getting some pretty good yardage off it. But talking about that pass interference and how it didn't get all those effective yardage, but it probably brought some momentum back into Marcus's offense. So we're going to see if that comes back to bite Heber in later in this drive. Fakes the handoff once again. Finds Dudley, but Dudley can't bring it down. Goes right off his fingertips. Yeah, just a little bit too high of a throw there by um, Jackson Warren. Maybe not the best communication. Looks like Marcus is going with the, um, this is an old little line strategy. I'm, I've seen this before. Michigan's played it a couple times where they just set their guys up in a line so Heburn's defense doesn't know how to set it up. It's just a smart play, so basically Heburn's unprepared. And a quick toss off to Espinoza. He's gonna get Marcus the first down. Yeah, just basically that whole line formation there is just so that Heburn's defense isn't prepared for what's coming. Because usually you can tell by the offense what they might be running, but when you do it like that, Heburn doesn't have much time to react and set up what might be going on. Very smart play calling by uh, the Marcus head coach there. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Atkinson for Marcus is going to bring some more of the, those out tonight. Warren shotgun once again. A little movement on the Hebron line. Don't think they're going to call it here. I think Marcus is just going to reset here. And Warren fakes the handoff again. Tries to find Dudley on the sideline, but can't get to him. That's going to be an incomplete pass for Marcus. It'll bring up second and 10. You know, just Warren's just making too quick of decisions here. He's just not giving too much time. I think he's just either not throwing the ball at the time he should be, or he's just not making the best passes. That's two passes now where he's just missed his target. But good defense by Hebron to make those um, miscues happen. And Warren all alone in the backfield. Rolls out to his right. Can't find a man downfield. He's going to scramble. Slides at the 45-yard line, or the 35-yard uh, line, sorry. And that's going to bring about a gain of six for the Marauders. That was a close play there by Heber, and I'm surprised there wasn't a flag on that play. A little bit of a late hit straight to the head there by um, what, that Heber and defender. I just guess they're going to stay away from that from right now, and they're just going to let this continue going on. This is a huge third down here for Marcus because they're not in field goal range, so they either need to get this first down or they're going to need to get a little closer so they have a better chance at fourth down. And Warren takes the handoff again, finds Dudley open in the middle of the field. Dudley tries to make a man miss, and he's going to go down 
at about the eight yard line. Yeah, that, that Hebron defense really bit on the run there. You can just tell by that one guy that was coming at them instantly, he bit on the run. It was just a good play. You can just watch here as number 57 bites on the run and in the middle of the field is just wide open for Dallas Dudley to make a play and he obviously outruns this corner. And another quick screen pass off to Espinoza. It's only gonna get about a gain of one. And great job by number seven on that last play, Trin Brana, making that open field tackle, saving it, saving Hebron from a touchdown there. There's going to be a flag on this play. I think it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct on either Hebron or Marcus. I couldn't really tell who, who instigated there. But two guys seem to be yapping at each other. I'm sure someone's going to get the flag here. And the refs are meeting about this. And Marcus going in that single file line once again, trying to catch Hebron, Hebron's defense off guard again. See if it works again. And it looks like the refs are just gonna pick up the flag here. Oh. Sorry. Looks like the penalty was on Hebron. I'm not sure what it was though, but that'll put Marcus at Hubron's four yard line. I'm sure you're engaged, so I'm sure that's why Marcus is bringing out this again. This could work, it worked last time obviously. They got the short yardage play they needed last time. This could be the same play as last time. And Espinoza is gonna run it up the gut and there's another flag on the play. Holding again, but I'm not sure. See here, any flag against he runs is just gonna make it maybe at the two yard line here for Marcus, but yeah, and that's what exactly what it's gonna be. It's just gonna be at get move up an extra yard for Marcus after that play since we're right next to the end zone. Marcus has played two plays in the red zone and it's still first down for him. <laughs> <laughs> and it, they're going in the single file formation again. And it seems to be working. I don't blame him. Coach Atkinson for Marcus definitely had his tricks up his sleeve. And Espinoza to, runs it up the middle once again. And he fights his way in for the touchdown. And that will be a Marcus touchdown, the first one of the night. Yeah, up six zip early. Just well played offense. They got luck. They got some key flags on that Hebron defense. Made some good plays when they needed to. Converted a couple good third downs and just a great drive to start the game. Score is now zero to six, pending the extra point. With six minutes left in this first quarter. And the kick is good, so that will bring the score up to seven to zero. Marauders currently beating Ebron at their own homecoming game. Yeah, just not the well um, headset defense there. Just the big flags on that Hebron defense just didn't play very well. You know, it was just the flags really contributed to that drive there for Marcus. They had a good drive offensively. They converted on some key third downs, but also Hebron kind of gave him a hand with those penalties on third down. And even in the red zone there, just getting two flags in the red zone, that's just not acceptable for that Hebron defense. So I'm sure coming out next drive they'll play a little better. But... It'll be interesting to see how um, Hebron's offense reacts here. Now, if you're Hebron, would you be going, would you try to take your time on this first drive, or do you think you want to score as fast as possible? Well, you just saw Marcus go down the field. They took a lot of time off the clock, so it's going to be, I would assume they're going to come out. They know their game. They know they can beat Marcus. They beat some big opponents already. They beat Flower Mound, who did, of course, beat Flower Mound, did beat Marcus. So they know they can beat these type of top-tier teams in their district, and they've done it before. They, they've won district a couple times in the past. So, you know, they, they're, they're a good team this year. They can do this. It's just going to be a matter of they actually come out to play. As their coach always says, it's always look into the next opponent. It's always... Brazel's always looking to the next opponent. He's never looking too far in the future. He's always set on what's going to happen next. 
And number one, Dakota Bridges back to receive for Hebron, but it looks like he's just gonna let this one go out of the end zone for a touchback. That will put Hebron Hawks at their own 25 yard line to start the drive. Yeah, we're gonna see how this offense come out. They do score a lot of, they do score a lot of points when they need to, especially coming off that 34-12 um, win against Capel last week. They played some good football. And of course, they haven't lost a district game so far, so of course they've been playing well in district. They are four and three on that hand, though. They did lose their three opening games out of district play. So, you know, they're just gonna have to come in here and just play how they've been playing. They're on a good streak. And Hebron with the three wide out formation. Looking deep. Oh, almost caught by number 14, Micah Green. Yeah, J Jacob Bunniff, the first player of that game by him was just a long pass. Tried to catch Marcus off guard, and they almost did. He almost made that, um, Green almost made that catch there. But also at the same time, Chance Sauter for Marcus made almost a great play too. So could have been a pick there, but they're just kind of, they're just trying to catch on Marcus off guard there on that first play. Even with the three wide out formation again. Bunniff hands it off to number 21, Fred Ware. He's gonna get stopped just at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the Marcus sideline really likes that one. That's gonna bring up a huge third down here for Heber in their third and 10. Of course, on this first half, you don't wanna go three and out after you give up a score on the um, defensive side of the ball. I'm sure they're gonna throw the ball here. Yeah, and you can see Heber now going with the four wide out formation here. Obviously looking to go deep. Yeah, trying to get some space. And of course, Marks is playing back a little, knowing that they have 10 yards to spare. And Bunniff throws a screen pass to... I don't think he's gonna have enough to get it. I think he was just a little short there. Maybe a yard or uh -oh. half a yard short. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna mark him down just a yard short. Number 22, Lane Heedworth with the reception there. Yeah, Heedworth made some good plays in space there. Definitely, that could have been a loss of maybe even a yard if he didn't make those good plays there. But this is gonna key for it down. You don't wanna turn the ball over here. So if they are, are they going to go for it? Yes, they are. They, yeah. they are going for it on fourth and one. I like this aggressive play calling by Brazel. And the handoff to number 21. It's gonna get stopped just behind the line of scrimmage. They're not gonna get it. That's gonna, it's gonna be Marcus's ball here. But there is a penalty on the on the play. Interested to see what this is. Yeah, this is a big call here by the refs. Marcus's defense does come back on the field, so maybe it is on Marcus here. It's a key penalty here in this first drive. And Hebron taking a page out of Marcus's playbook here going also lining up single file trying to catch Marcus off guard looks like Brazel saw how how Marcus used that against them and he was like hey why can't we do that but Marcus's defense is coming off the field now so it looks like it will be a turnover on downs and the Marauders will get the ball at the Hebron 35 yeah that was just maybe Marcus's defense knew exactly what was coming there on that fourth down. They brought pressure. They stopped the run, and Heber just couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't gain that one solid yard they needed, and this is huge here because Marcus has small field to work with, and they already drove down the field pretty effectively last drive, so if they can come up here and get a two-score lead here in the first quarter, that would be huge. Jackson Warren coming out again on the field. And the Marauders looking to score once again with excellent field position. And Warren hands it off to number 20, Walker Wells. He's gonna get a good chunk of yards, about maybe six or seven on the play. Yeah, he was rumbling through defenders there. He probably could have got stopped for one yard if he just stopped there, but he broke a couple tackles and he was able to get a solid gain on first down. And Hebron just cannot seem to find an answer to this Marcus offense. Yeah, this Marcus offense so far has been playing great. So that. Huber needs to just settle down on their side of the field and just, 
I, it's, I know it's early in the game, this is a big game, but you just gotta settle down. And Warren fakes the handoff, almost gets sacked in the backfield, and he's just gonna go out of bounds, and it looks like there's a late hit, and he, and Warren is slow to get up. I'm surprised they didn't call that one. That was pretty late of a hit there. He was at least two feet, two steps out of bounds, and the refs didn't call anything. That's now two plays that I think they might have missed there on those late hits, but. Warren looks like he's okay, able to walk on his own strength, going back out onto the field. That's going to bring up third and long for the Marauders. So far, they've been pretty good about converting on third downs, but let's see if they can do it again here. Yeah, this one's definitely um, one of the longer ones tonight. But converting on those third downs on the first drive definitely staple the first drive, so see if they can do it again. And Warren finds his man in the middle of the field, but the refs are going to call it an incomplete pass as he drops it out of bounds. Isaac Katab was the receiver there, looking for the refs to change their mind, but I don't think they will. Yeah, I just don't think he ever had cl clear possession of that ball, and then he just couldn't get one foot and have possession of the ball. And of course, he dropped it there at the end there. So they could have got that third down there. They had they had that set up perfectly, but I think they're just going to go for the um, punt here probably. Yeah, it looks like. So Hebron comes up big on third down, forcing the Marauders to punt as this will go out of bounds at around the Hebron 18. Yeah, big defense to stop there by Hebron. They played that well, especially coming off that fourth fourth down turnover. They needed that because you can't go down two scores in this big of a game here. And now if you're Hebron, after that quick four and out last drive, what do you think the game plan is now? I just think you're going to have to say with what you what you are good at. They can't change anything just yet. This is early in the game. That first drive really doesn't mean much right now. It's early in the game. They got plenty of time. So they're going to stay the same. They're going to try to do and then execute their game plan. And Bunniff hands it off to number 21, Fred Ware. And he's not going to get anywhere on that run. Yeah, that's just another run where Marcus' defense is ready for it. And they just stop it again. It's just, it's just quick. It's just Keeburn can't find any open space in the run game so far. Yeah, Marcus just bottles that one up. Second and 10 for the Hawks on their own 20 yard line. And Bunna fakes the handoff, finds a man downfield, incomplete. Number one, Dakota Bridges, the intended receiver, couldn't get there in time. Yeah, just another, again, just good pressure by that Marcus defensive. Bryson Barber's really getting to that quarterback really quick, just not letting Bunniff have enough time in the pocket to make some plays, just not executing those passes very well. And that play will bring up a third and long for the Hawks. They just can't seem to get anything going on offense. And another third down here, another big third down. Of course, they're going to pass the ball. And Bunniff finds Dakota Bridges finally deep downfield, and that will put the Hawks into Marcus territory. Yeah, just open, wide open downfield, really not a, really a man that close to him. And Bunniff just made a good play in that pocket to find some space and be able to throw that ball. And now the Hawks going with a hurry up offense. They're just gonna hand this ball off, try and get a few extra yards. And a big slam from Fred Ware. It's gonna get them about four yards on the play. It's gonna bring up a second and six. Yeah, they're going that quick handoff, trying to catch Marcus off guard, especially after that big play. Looked like they even cut the chain gang off, off, off guard. Now it looks like the Hawks are taking their time. Yeah, they're trying to reset here. They know they can't go too quick. It's too big of a possession here. Only about a minute 15 left in the first quarter. The Hawks looking to make something happen before the quarter ends. They're just going to hand it off to Ware once again. Not it's about really, three on the play. Yeah, not really going to get much there. It's going to be another kind of decently long third down here. Marcus has been good at getting into third down. They just got to convert and make sure they don't actually convert on this third down like they gave up last, drive, last um, third down.
So far, the Marcus defense has been pretty good, especially on third downs. Yeah, they're probably going to bring pressure here like they do a lot. You're going to want to watch Barber here on that right side, but he <laughs> does get pancaked onto the floor as soon as I and say that. Bunniff finds his man downfield. Dakota Bridges, the intended receiver, again, almost looked like he caught it using the back of his defender, but the ball comes loose. Almost a great play by the Hawks there. Yeah, just not enough space and some good coverage downfield by Marcus. Way better that time than last um, last drive. That was Cole McKnight there with the get, that good defense there on Bridges. And now the Hawks looking to punt. Definitely not the outcome they wanted here, but it sure is better than giving the Marauders the ball at their own 30 again. Yeah, and they did look a lot better this drive than they did the last drive. And the Marauders are going to call a fair catch here and get the ball at their own 12. Yeah, just smart, smart play there by the fair catch, just making sure. But for that Hebron offense, they have been looking. They did look a lot better that drive than they did last time. So that's good signs for them. They got plenty of time in this game. They just got to make sure their defense comes up clutch again and doesn't give up the score here. Only a little over 20 seconds left in the first quarter here. You think Marcus is gonna try to get another quick score in before the quarter ends, or do you think they're just gonna take their time here? Well, Cole Welliver is coming out on the field, and one of his things is he has a very strong arm. I wouldn't be surprised if he looks for um, Ashton, Ashton Cozart there on, alone on the um, right side of the field. He has some good speed downfield, so I wouldn't be surprised if Cole Welliver goes deep here to end the quarter off. Welliver breaks the sack, and as you said, he finds he finds his man Ashton Cozart on the sideline. He's and Cozart is going to bring the Marauders down to about the 50-yard line. That is the best thing I've predicted my whole entire life. I'm pretty proud of that. But as I said, you know they try to go that long yardage play there by Cole. That's just his that's his key thing there. He's got a strong arm. He's got pretty good accuracy, so he can throw those ball down field. And him and Cozart have a great connection. So. Those two work very well together. Uh, 13 seconds left, and the Marauders are just going to hand it off to Espinosa once again. Only got to get a, about a gain of one on the play there. And I think they'll just take this into the next quarter. And we will be right back after this message from our sponsors. This broadcast of Ellis Cement is being brought to you by Texas Roadhouse in Flower Mound. Come by for our, our hand cut steaks, legendary sides, and fresh baked bread. We're open until 11 o'clock. After the game, Texas Roadhouse, legendary food, legendary service. broadcast of the Heron Hawks versus the Marcus Marauders brought to you by Texas Roadhouse in Flower Mound as Cole Welliver finds Ashton Cozart on the sideline for a game of about five. Yeah just a quick throw there they're gonna have another third down here coming up another big third down as Cole does stay out there they like to switch those quarterbacks so you will see more Cole Welliver tonight it's just gonna be more of Jackson Warren as it's been going on in the season. They both have their specialties of course Cole is the sophomore and Warren's the senior. And the Marauders fake the handoff again. Welliver tries to find Cozart again. Can't get there in time, though. That's going to be an incomplete pass. Yeah, every target there by 
Cole was just to Cozart. I, he likes that combination. I'm sure that's what he was trying to set up that whole time. So he's just trying to find that guy over the middle. He probably almost had Dudley too on that left side of the field. He probably could have went too, but he almost snuck that pass in there. So that was a good pass by him, just, just a little bit off cue. And that fourth down is going to bring up the Marcus Punting unit. Number 22, Lane Hallworth, back to receive for Hebron. Yeah, so we've seen that pretty good long drive by Marcus to there, and now both sides have just not been able to get much going on the offensive side of the ball. And that punt goes out, out of bounds, at around the Hebron 23-yard line. It'll be interesting to see what Hebron brings out here after both drives really not going that well other than that one long pass play. Um, Buffett had early in the earlier in that last drive, so kind of have to find something going. That run game hasn't been working very well, so it'll be interesting to see. And this is still a one-position game, but it seems that Hebron has their match made out for them tonight. You know, this is a big game, as you said earlier. It is their homecoming, and also a big game in the district. And Bunniff tries to throw down field intended receiver Aiden v Aiden Veals. Yeah, just he a had, bit behind him there. Yeah, he did have that man open. He just a little bit bad of a pass, but maybe not the best communication. Maybe a mix up on routes, but again, pretty good pressure by that Marcus D line. Got got to Buffett, made him force that pass, and made 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 him have that miscue. And the Hawks really taking their time on this drive. Don't want to make any mistakes. And Bunniff with a quick handoff to Hallworth is going to get the Hawks about six yards on the play there. Bringing up third and short. See if they can convert on this third down because I'm sure you're going to have to bring out the punting team here. It's, but we did see earlier that they did go for it in a in their own field, so maybe they do go for it here, but it's going to be a short yardage here, so it would be going to be fun to see what they bring out. Very crucial third down coming up here. Keep running, going with the three wide outs here. And a shotgun formation in the backfield. As Bunna fakes the handoff, Tries to escape the pressure. And he's going to run for the first down, and he's going to just barely make it. That's going to be a first down for the Hawks there. Yeah, that little final stref there by Buffin led him, made him get that first down. Almost good pursuit there by that Marcus defense to get to him, but Buffin made that last extension there. Was able to get that key first down for Hebron. The Marcus defensive line, really, really good at bringing pressure to the quarterback tonight. as the Hawks go in the same formation they've been using. And Bunniff looking to throw deep once again. Can't get there, throws into double coverage. Intended receiver, looks like number three, Kobe Baldwin. Yeah, you were talking about how Marcus was bringing some good pressure. So far, Jacob Giddings has six and a half sacks for Marcus and um, Bryson Barber has seven and a half, so they've had a lot of good pressure this season as both of those combined for about 14 sacks this season. So that's some pretty good pressure on that Marcus D line. So you kind of just got to keep it up and bring some more pressure because, as you can tell early in this game, that is bringing some miscues to this Hebron offense. And Bund fakes the handoff again, looking to throw deep. Finds a man downfield, number 14, the intended receiver, Micah Green, lays out. For, the, for a desperate attempt to catch that ball, but it's just too far in front of him. Yeah, and that time Buffett just made a miscue mentally. He had plenty of time in the pocket. No pressure was coming whatsoever. So he just overthrew his receiver a little, but he's finding those open spaces downfield, so maybe that can come together later in the game for here. And of course, it's still a one-possession game. And that play there, the incompletion on that play is going to bring up third and long for the Hawks. Hebron hasn't been too good about converting on third downs tonight, but let's see if they can turn that around here. Yeah, it's just too long of third downs for them. They got it. They got to make some plays to get closer. And it looks like the Hawks are calling a timeout, trying to 
recompose here. Yeah, this is gonna be a hard play for them, so they gotta really think this one through. Probably gotta understand that if they don't get any yards here, they're gonna punt the ball, and they need 10 yards to even get the first down. And they've struggled to make anything really happen other than that one long pass play they had earlier in the last drive. But basically, other than that, they've had a few short yardage runs. That's about all they've got so far. You're right, this, this Marcus defense is absolutely smothering the Hebron offense, not letting them get any yardage almost. Yeah, they played well. We've seen them play well. You speak of that, they only they held on um, Plano West last week to only 14 points, and they've, they of course, in the mountains showed them, they played well too. It's just, it's always the offense, whether if the offense can get started, and the defense is always there. It's just a matter if they both can go together at the same time. That's kind of been Marcus's each issue. They've Maybe they have the offense one night, but they don't have the defense, or they don't have the defense, but they don't have the offense. That's been their big issue so far, is staying consistent on both sides of the ball. And it looks like Hebron looking to throw deep as they bring out four wideouts here. And Bunniff drops back to pass, trying to find an open man, scrambling in the pocket, and he's going to run for the first down. He's going to slide after a gain of about eight yards. Not enough for the first down there, but a very good run by Bunniff. I think that maybe, yeah, they're not just going to bring out the punting team, which is probably the smarter play there. Just don't want to risk anything early in the game here. And Marcus once again stopping the Hawks from scoring. Yeah, I'm sure Marcus's defense has been like, yeah, we've done our job. We've stopped it pretty much every single time. So they're definitely going to want their offense to bring some more points on the board here, no matter what way it comes in either a field goal or a touchdown. And number two with the reception here. He's going to run it back. A lot of open field. Only a few men to beat. He's at the 20, the 10, and that's going to be a, a punt return touchdown for the Marauders. Yeah, just not good coverage there on that Hebron, Hebron turn and just a lot of open space. He broke a lot of towel tackles there and just had a good run downfield. And that is going to bring the score up to, oh, actually there is a penalty on the play. And it looks like this play might not stand. Yeah, it seems to be a call here on Marcus. Maybe on, I think it might have been on Hebron. I can only assume it was something like a block in the back or holding as it is at the Hebron 45 yard line. So a wonderful kick punt return wiped away by just one penalty. Marcus looking to get those points back here. Well, now we know that their special team is playing great, so there's another positive for this Marcus team. Just and another incomplete pass, intended target number 11, Dallas Dudley. Yeah, Dudley just had no idea where that ball was. That was just a great throw by Warren, but Dudley really just had no idea where that ball was, and I don't know if that was some kind of miscue on what route he was running or if he didn't know that ball was supposed to come to him. But that ball was perfectly placed. He could have had that touchdown. It just, he didn't really go for it. Marcus offense really aggressive on this drive, looking to get those points back that were taken away from them with that penalty. As they hand it off to number 20, Walker Wells. And he's going to get into the end zone. No, looks like he was just short. Yeah, but a good run there, just a really good run there by Walker Wells. That is, they have two running back system, but I think there's a flag in the backfield. There's going to be... Might have been holding on Marcus. Well, that's two key flags here that have stopped almost two touchdowns, or at least close to a second touchdown so far in this drive. And that's going to bring Marcus back to the Hebron 45. And it'll bring up a second and 20 here for the Marauders. Just another key penalty that you can't really have in these type of drives. So I think just Marcus needs to settle down and just play some cleaner football. 
And they fake the handoff to Wells here. As Dallas Dudley makes the catch, makes a man miss. And he's get he finally gets wrapped up at the Hebron five yard line. Looks to be that this one will count and there's gonna be no fog on this play. So after three pretty big plays by Marcus, there's this one finally counts so they're back on the five of Hebron. But even with those flags, Hebron cannot let these big plays happen. And that's three straight big plays they've let up. So can't really have this happen as we're gonna see what Jackson Warren has in mind. Looking to the corner of the end zone. Number six, the intended retarget, Ashton Cozart. And I feel like that might have been illegal touching anyway if he even did catch that because it, it did look to me like he stepped out of bounds at the back of the end zone there. Yeah, Jackson Moore just tried to find him over the top. They know Ashton Cozart is a very good receiver. Of course, he's a four-star. He's almost committed. He just lowered down his um, top eight just earlier this week. So he's a good player. He can make those types of catches just a little bit too far out of his reach. And they hand the ball off to Espinoza again, and he's going to get wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Now it's going to be third and five here, so this is going to be a big play here by Marcus. See what they have in hand and what they want to bring out. See if we're going to bring out the... I think Warren's going to go over here to talk to his coaches. As I think Marcus is going to bring out this line formation thing they've done three times in this game so far. And each time they've done it to success. Yeah, and each time has also been a been a run play, so I wouldn't be surprised if Hubert's thinking run to start this play here, but maybe they come out with a little bit of a tight end run out to the right and find some open face, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. A trick play within a trick play. And there is a flag on the play now. And it looks like it will probably be on Marcus. And it is, it was a false start on the Marauders. That's going to bring him back a few more yards. Now, longer third and goal here. So they're definitely going to have to go end zone, of course, since it's third and goal. So it's basically end zone or they're going to take the field goal. Definitely looking for the end zone here if I were the Marauders. You know, you basically have to. You know your field goal can, kicker can make it from here or even closer. So just going to have to go into probably going to be a pass play. I'd watch Dudley here out to the left as he moves in motion. And it is caught. No, out of bounds, it seems. So that's going to bring up the fourth down and bring out the punting unit. Looks like the intended target was number 85, Sam Wisner. You know, Warren just tried to find, I think that's going to be Kahib over the top there, but good coverage there by Heber to make that play stop as Mark is going to have to bring out the field goal team. Only 6.43 left in the game, and the kick is good, so that will increase the score to 10 to zero. Marauders still winning against Hebron in their own homecoming game. Hebron desperately looking to make a change of pace here. Yeah, but that's good there by Marcus, no matter what, they got some more points on the board and let their defense just relax a little, understand that they can give up a little bit of points and it's okay. So good job by that Marcus on offense and good job by that Hebron defense to stop um, Marcus there, especially after that long play they had to get to the five yard line. So of course though, Overall for Marcus, they got to stop with those penal those key penalties there because they had five or six penalties there that basically just stopped them from scoring each time. Yeah, a lot of big penalties on that drive from the Marauders. Definitely saved Heber in a few points there, but in the end, they still couldn't hold out long enough to completely keep he for, uh, Marcus from scoring. Yeah, if I'm Heber and you got six minutes and 39, you're going to receive the second half kickoff. So I say you run out this clock, but you get downfield and you see you make another score because if you can do that, then you can come in down 10-7, go into the second half, and even have the chance to take the lead on your first drive. So you got to really milk the clock here coming here. Milk the clock and get downfield. But as I say that, the run game has been struggling. So it's going to be interesting to see what they bring out. Number one, Dakota Bridges back to receive for Hebron once again. Excited to see what Heaven brings out on this drive. 
You know, they've had those long pass plays pretty open so far. Of course, they converted one of them and then they missed a couple last drive. So I'm sure they're going to go for that again. They always have those guys a little deep over the top, open a lot. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see if they go with that or try to get this running game going. And the Hawks just let that one go out of the end zone there. So that's going to give them a touchdown and the ball at their own 25-yard line. Yeah, Buffin has some had some accuracy problems on the um, first couple drives. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can come back from that. Of course, not all those accuracy problems were his fault. This Marcus D-line has done great, as we said earlier. And Bunneth quickly rolls out to his right and gets it off to number three, Kobe Baldwin. For a gain of about nine, that's going to bring up first and, or second and short. Yeah, just good quick throw there, set up a Maybe even go for a long pass play here since you know that two yards is going to be quite easy to gain maybe on third down or even fourth down. So so they could go for this um, long pass play. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. And Bunniff drops back to pass all day in the pocket. Intended target number three, Kobe Baldwin, once again thrown well behind him. Yeah, just then again, it's just accuracy problems right now. He's just not making the best of throws that he, he knows he can make. So he kind of just has to settle down. I think he's just got a little bit of the nerves here, knowing how big of a game this is for Hebron. Baldwin tried to make a play there, but in the end just couldn't haul it in. Yeah, that would have been a nice catch, little one-handed grab there to probably get the first down and maybe even a little more. But again, a key third down here for the Hebron offense. And they're just going to hand it off once again to Fred Ware, but it looks like he's not going to get enough for the first down. If he does, it's just going to be a little short. I think they're going to say first down here. I think he just got a, just enough to get the first down. And a big third down conversion from the Hawks there, keeping this drive alive. I think he literally landed directly on that first down marker there, so. Hebron really liking this formation they've been using in the past few plays. St sticking with it so far. Spunoff drops back to pass. Scrambling in the pocket, trying to buy some time as they pass it off to Ware. And he's gonna get all the way down to the Marcus 45. But there is a penalty in the backfield, so it looks like this play will be coming back. Yeah, here comes the key foul, fouls here against Hebron and their offense. So it's just really been a foul game so far. It's just flags have been the moral of the story for this game so far. It's just another key holding call. And as, he, as you said, it is a holding call on the Hawks there, so that'll bring him back another 10 yards, bringing up first and 20. But overall, a good play there by Hebron. Hebron now back to where they started this drive. Now they need two first downs for the price of one. Got plenty of time. They still got six minutes, basically. So they got time to make this drive happen. They just need to settle down and play a little smarter, make sure you don't have those flags. And Bunna fakes the handoff. Throws deep downfield and an amazing one hand catch by number 14, Micah Green. Somehow able to pull that in. Think that he might have dropped it there at the last second. And yes, he did. He did drop it there. But good attempt there. Had the one handed catch, but just made a little bit of stumble there on that last play and just couldn't um, rile it in. Almost an amazing play. But then again, that was pretty good coverage by Marcus, so that was a good, well-placed ball there by Buffin. So, I mean, they just got to continue to do that. If they can find those open spaces, they might as well take it. You just got to work better on that accuracy and making those catches. Hebron's starting to get a little desperate now as they bring out four receivers. And Bunniff throwing down deep once again. Caught by Dakota Bridges, and he has nothing but green in front of him as Hebron finally scores their first touchdown of the night. Yeah, there it is. They finally broke through for Bridges. Just again, another long throw. I think the refs are communicating again here. I don't know if that they're going to call this back or not, but. Oh, you're right. I do see a penalty down in the backfield near the line of scrimmage. 
Yeah, see what they're going to call here. This is going to be a big call here, but players are coming back, so you know, I think this touchdown might be called back. And number 14, Micah Green, clearly upset. And this touchdown is coming back. And just another key play brought back in this game. Yeah, that's penalties on both sides have brought back some key touchdowns. So both teams need to play, play smarter coming into the second half. Of course, you still got the five minutes here in the second quarter. But both teams just need to be playing smarter because that's you now like four touchdowns between both teams. That could have been, of course, touchdowns. But f flags have held that back. And it looks like the Hawks are going back another five yards from the line of scrimmage. Bring up first, second and 25. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just going to go deep again. They've had it the last two times, so you might as well just try try again. You still got you got to make up 25 yards, so you just got to. It does look like the deep ball game has been working for Hebron a bit better than anything else they've been work doing so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they threw it deep again as Bunniff fakes the handoff and finds number three ball bumbles bobbles the ball a little bit but eventually brings it in and they'll bring it now that's about a gain of nine on the play there almost brings it back to the original line of scrimmage as they'll bring up third and 11. You know, just bobbles it a little bit, able to man maintain possession. It's still going to be a long third down here for Hebron, but they did gain some key yardage back. Great, great effort by Kobe Baldwin there to keep his eye on the ball there and just track it down and pull it in. Yeah, this is going to be a huge third down because if they can't get this, they give the ball back to Marcus with at least 40 minute, four minutes left on the clock. And Bunniff all day to throw. Finds Baldwin again, just a bit too high for him. Can't reel it in there. And that would have been a first down for the Hawks, but this will bring up fourth down. Yeah, so flags and just pass accuracy, just kind of really killing that drive off. Of course, you had that touchdown, but of course, the penalty holds that one back. So looks like Kieran's going to bring out the punt team, and Marcus now has four minutes and 32 seconds to make something happen on offense. Both teams not really able to get much going on offense, but Marcus has been able to break through and get two scoring drives tonight. Let's see if they can make it another one. Yeah, another score here would be huge for Marcus. And a bit of a short kick from Hebron, but a good bounce will bring it back to about the 30. But Marcus does field it and brings it up to about the 34. Yeah, so you're going to need about a little less than 70 yards here, but they can get downfield and maybe even get a field goal here would be huge. I'm sure they're just going to try to go down, do what they've been doing. They've been the one team that's actually been able to score so far, so obviously what they're doing has been at least a little bit more right than what Hebron's been doing. Well said, as Jackson Warren comes back out onto the field again. I can only assume that, they've, that they're just going to come back out and do what they've been doing all game because it seems to be working for them so far. Yeah, you could see Dudley here open on the um, left side of the field. He's got some good moves. So. And a quick screen pass off to number four. Isaac Atlab. It's going to get behind the line of scrimmage. Just lose a couple yards. Just try to go with that quick screen pass but just couldn't find any open space. So sure this time they'll go a little bit further downfield and rely on, of course, Cozart and Dudley, their two lead wide receivers, to make something happen. And a high snap for Warren. He's going to roll out to his right, and he's going to throw that away. No intentional grounding called there. I feel like they might have been able to, but the rest just don't call it. Yeah, just good pressure there by that Hebron D-line. Now they're starting to bring the pressure on Jackson Warren. Just that pocket collapsed very quick on Warren. So this can be another, this can be a long third down here. And you don't really want to give the ball back to Hebron because that's going to give him power the ball near the 35-yard line. And you still got about three minutes left and you're going to have all your timeouts, about two timeouts. Third and 12 for the Marauders as they bring out a four wide out formation. And the pocket just absolutely collapses. And it's picked off by the Hawks. 
And Warren slow to get up again, but looks like he'll be okay. Yeah, he just got hit as a throw, hit, 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 oh, hit as he threw, and just didn't make the didn't make the best pass. So, of course, underthrown on Kozart there, and just didn't find him. Pass was intercepted by Owen Bodnar, safety for the Hawks, and the Hawks finally have some momentum going into one of their drives tonight. You yeah, got about three minutes to get down the field and hope that penalties don't stun their offensive drives again. Hebron going with a four wide out formation again. As Bunniff throws it behind the line of scrimmage to Micah Green, who throws it and almost makes a huge completion. Yeah, they just try to go with that little trick play there to start off the drive. And they had the man downfield, but he just dropped it. He was open. He had the pass in his hands. He just dropped it, but a well executed play nonetheless. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another one of those plays later on in the night. Yeah, they've w basically worked this time. They just couldn't make the, couldn't keep their hands on the ball. So I wouldn't, as you said, we wouldn't be surprised if that happens again. Now Bunniff rolling out to his right, finds Bridges for a gain of about five, and the clock, clock is going to keep rolling. As there's a little under three and a half minutes left in this game. Yep, another key third down. It's going to be about third and four, maybe. They're probably going to throw the ball again. As of course, the running game hasn't been the best so far. And a big third down for the Hawks here. If they don't get it here, I can only assume that they'll go for it. Looks like they're trying to get the Marauders to jump off sides. Doesn't look like the Marauders are going to fall for it. Spunoff drops back to pass, looking for an open man. All day to throw. Pockets collapsing. Escapes the sacks. And I think Matthew Barber there just brought the pressure and he forced a fumble there on Buffin, but it is going to be down here. And, of course, now Hebron lost all that yardage, so they're going to have to bring out the punt team here. So that's probably a worst-case scenario for Hebron. Good effort by Bunoff to keep the play alive, dodging all those sacks, but in the end, it seems to do more harm than good for them. Yeah, as you said, but I'm sure that Hebron probably has enough time on the play clock here just to kill the rest of the two minutes and just maybe bring it into um, – two-minute warning there is no two-minute warning but the referees will stop the clock as I believe there was a timeout called by the Marauders so good enough for a two-minute warning yeah that works too but even then Marcus is gonna have time on the clock they're gonna be able to get downfield so they're gonna get this ball back maybe around their 20 barring any other out-of-the-world events here in this game. So they could get downfield. They have enough time. They have the firepower. It's just whether if they play like they have the firepower. So I wouldn't be surprised if they bring out Cole Welliver for this closing drive here, considering his arm power. Yeah, we saw that early in the game where he got that, like, 40-yard gain um, to that Cozart pass earlier in the um, second quarter. So wouldn't be surprised if they do bring that out. And the Marauders now taking the field, as well as the Hawks. Yeah, it looks like number 22, Philip Pons, back to receive for Marcus. Let's see if he can make anything happen on this kick return. And he is just in up. As soon as he caught the ball, didn't realize he should have probably called for a fair catch there. I don't know if the refs missed it if he did, but if he didn't, then it works either way. They're going to have the ball here at about the 15-yard line, so it's going to be a long way to gain. But I'm pretty sure if Marcus just runs out the clock, too, that wouldn't be the worst case because you wouldn't let Hebron get that score at the end of the half and just didn't let them have a chance to um, take the lead or tie the game when they came out in the um, second half. Marauders are going to get their, the ball at their own 15-yard line, so they have an 85-yard drive ahead of them. And as you said, I'm positive that Cole Welliver is now out there. And he is, so it looks like the Marauders are looking to throw deep these next few plays. Yeah, they have a lot of yard to gain, and not really that much time to do it. 
And they're just going to start the drive with a quick handoff to Walker Wells, but there is a flag on the play, which stops the play. Yeah, it seems to be a false start here. It's going to bring the um, Marcus offense even closer to their own end zone. And you, are, you were correct. It was a false start on the Marauders. And that will bring it back to their own 10-yard line, bring up first and 15. Wouldn't be surprised now if Marcus goes for the throw instead of that quick little run, unless they're just trying to kill the time here. And it's a possibility here, but why would you bother bringing out Cole Welliver if you're just going to kill time? And they're going to fake the handoff as Welliver drops back into his own end zone. And a low pass is caught by Connor Vaughn for a big gain of about 14. Yeah, just Cole was under pressure there, but made a pretty good pass. There is a flag in the end zone. Gonna Looks like it was on the Hawks, however. Yeah, so either way, Mark is going to gain some yardage here and going to get the first down. You got the Marauders do, in fact, get the first down and then some off of that play. I believe the flag was because of illegal hands to the face on the Hawks. So a big chunk of yardage gained by the Marauders on that play. You know, they have a lot more room to work with here, so and a lot easier for them to gain it. And Welliver chucks it down deep. Oh, just through the hands of his intended receiver, number six. Ashton Cozart. Yeah, he had, I think it was just a little bit too far out of reach there for Cozart. He, I think it just went right through his hands. So good throw there by Cole, though. Just almost made that connection there. See, almost basically a perfect throw, just a little bit too far out of reach. Just through the fingertips of, that, of Cozart there. Would have been possibly a touchdown if that was caught, but that will bring up second and ten for the Marauders now. I wouldn't be surprised if Marcus even tries to go deep again. I only see two wideouts, though. So it is a screen pass to Wells. And he's going to get a good chunk of yards, doing a little somersault there for a few extra. Going to be a short third down. Say that they're going to bring it back to the 45-yard um, line, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit longer of a third down here as um, they're going to say that his knee touched just a little before. Now just over a minute left, as it looks like there is a timeout called. So I'd assume now that Marcus is just going to revamp here. They, It's going to be a short third down, about third and three. So they can't get this third down and maybe then just set up for a long pass play or go for the long pass play and just maybe even try the f fourth and three, but I would definitely go with probably the, they're gonna go with, try to get this first down and then go for the pass play and just go from there. Yeah, that sounds like the smart thing to do. Only a minute left in this second quarter. About to go into the half, so they really have not much to lose here. Yeah, but so far in this game, we've seen a lot of penalty, flag, penalty flags that have resulted in touchdown plays that got called back or drives that have been stunned by penalty flags, all these things, this not smartest mental play and a lot of flags on both sides. Both teams got to clean that up, clean that up going into the second half. But so far, a good game and huge for Hebron to come back in this um, second half as we close out the first half, especially down 10. And Marcus is playing pretty good football. It's a big game for them too. And both teams make their way back out onto the field for the final minute of play in this first half. Marcus making, looking to make this a three possession game here, if possible. Yeah, and Marcus still has um, one timeout to work with. About a minute left on the clock. And Welliver fakes the handoff to Wells, and Wells all alone gets a block and goes out at about the 25-yard line. No flags on the play this time. Yeah, just nobody was covering 
um, Walker Wells there. He kind of just faked the handoff and just had a bunch of open space to work with. It's like the Hawks just completely forgot about him and just had plenty of open space to run downfield. And since he went out of bounds, the, Mar the Marauders won't have to waste another timeout to stop the clock. Yeah, good smart play there by Walker Wells. Just under a minute left for the Marauders to score here. Yeah, so you don't really got to worry about time just yet. You still got a minute to work with, and you got the timeout. So Marcus just needs to um, keep their heads up and just stay calm. They can definitely get a score here on this drive. And they fake the handoff again. And Welliver finds another wide open man. Number 17, Connor Vaughn, the tight end, will get the ball down to about the, the Hebron 10. Yeah, that's just a great athletic play there by Cole Welliver. He was basically getting tackled while he was throwing that ball, and he still had the arm strength to go basically across the field and a little bit downfield to get that pass off. Vaughn uh, unable to make his way out of bounds, so the clock will keep ticking. Now they're going to go with a quick play here and just could see. And a quick pitch off to Wells. He's going to get down about at the one-yard line just short of the end zone there. I think they're going to say he got out of bounds, so I think the clock is going to stop. Clock is stopped with 26 seconds left remaining. Yeah, so, so far, Marcus has played this beautifully in this two-minute drill they've done. And an, a great truck there by Wells to get the Marauders some extra yardage. Yeah, Cole, especially as that sophomore, he's probably got a lot of pressure on him being this young of a guy playing in these big games. So he's done very well in this um, two-minute drill they've had so far. Second and goal at the one-yard line for the Marauders. It's in zone or bust for them, it seems. As Welliver gets sacked well into the backfield, and that's going to bring the Marauders all the way back to the Hebron 10. Yeah, he just didn't have any guys open in the end zone. But they're going to call timeout here, of course, since he got sacked. But they still got 17 seconds to work with. Probably going to go with one more play and then bring out the field goal team. It's probably going to be go for the end zone and then either, you know, score or have the incomplete pass. So and then they're just going to bring out the field goal team. So overall, barring any turnovers, could be a score here for Marcus. And that is Marcus's last time out as there is just under 20 seconds left remaining. Hebron needs to get a stop on these next two plays if they want to have a chance of coming back here. Yeah, it would be huge for Marcus to get the um, touchdown here, of course, going going into the second half, up three possessions. And then if you get the field goal, you're still only up by two possessions, but at least that way you s force them to have to score two touchdowns instead of a touchdown and a field goal. Absolutely right. And the teams make their way back onto the field here. And Cole Welliver still under center here. Yeah, they've trusted him this whole drive. It would be surprising for them to just take him out. So definitely going to go for the end zone here. Can't see any reason they wouldn't go end zone or bust on this play here. Send a man in motion. And they're just going to hand it off to Wells, who doesn't get very far, only about a couple yards on the play and they're gonna rush out the field goal unit here trying to get something off before time runs out only five seconds remaining four three two one and they do get the snap off in time and the kick is good so the Marauders do go up 13 to 0 right before the half yeah, that was a little risky there to go for that quick little play there, but it did work for them, so they're going to go into the second half up 13-0. So obviously Marcus playing the better game. A lot of flags on both sides, but some good football nonetheless. And with that drive ending off the half, we will see you at the start of the second half. You've been watching Ellison Man on YouTube, brought to you by Texas Roadhouse and Flower Mound. This broadcast of Ellison Men is being brought to you by Texas Roadhouse in Flower Mound. Come by for our hand-cut steaks, legendary sides, and fresh baked bread. We're open till 11 o'clock, so stop by after the game. Texas Roadhouse, legendary food, legendary service.
back to the LSMN Game of the Week. Ebron Hogs versus Marcus Marauders. I'm Brody Lewis alongside my partner, Brendan Selke, and we have quite a game here going on. Score is 13 to zero. Marcus is up. And as for scores around the district, Louisville versus Coppell. Louisville is up 25 to seven. Yeah, then um, Plano is um, winning 27-14. That is Plano West. They're beating Flower Mound, so that basically Flower Mound is just down in the deep right now. They're kind of struggling, and Plano West is playing some good football. And finally, Plano East versus Plano. Plano is absolutely crushing Plano East right now, 28 to seven, as the Marauders kick off to the Hebron Hawks. They're going to let it, they're just going to let it go out of the end zone for a touchback, and the Hawks will get the ball at their own 25. Yeah, we'll see what Hebron has in store here. Of course, Jen, that they're going to get the ball to start this. They really need a score here. they they got to come back in this game. It's just it's coming down to that point where they just need to settle down and they have to play smarter football, especially coming out for that first half. Too many flags, too many miscues on offense. I'm sure Coach B Brazel definitely talked to his players about all those penalties they were getting in the first half. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't too happy about that. And Bunniff with a quick screen off to Bridges. Going to get a, about five yards on the play there. It'll bring up second and four. Yeah, just quick little pass there. I think that's what they need to do to get going here. Good start. Good way to start the drive here. Six-yard play. Let's see if they can keep this up. And Bunniff rolling out to his left immediately. Finds his man for the first down, Kobe Baldwin with the reception. You know, just again, it's those quick passes and I think that's what Heber needs to do just to get their momentum going, getting their confidence up because during that first half, they weren't making those plays. They were just going down deep all the time. They were missing the passes. Their confidence was lower. So I think they need to go with those shorter passes and I think it'll work better off. Heber keeping Marcus on their toes seems to be paying off for him so far. As they hand it off to Fred Ware, He's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like there's an injured Marauder on the field. Can't quite see the number from here. But it does look like it is number 14 for the Marauders. Yeah, but hopefully he's okay. But going on about the game, it's just Heburn just hasn't really got that run game going so far. So we'll see if they can get that started. But... Hopefully that Marcus player down on the field is um, doing okay. I think he just got up. That seems to be number 14, Colton Bedgood. I think he's up and good. He's on his own feet, so that's good to hear for the Marcus defense. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. I expect to see. I would expect to see him out later tonight after he recovers. As the Hawks go on to second and long, Bunniff finds number 14, Micah Green, for a short gain on the play. Yeah, just going to be another long third down, which is the thing they've struggled with really so far. So those third downs, they just haven't been able to convert them. They've just been too long to gain. So hopefully they can come back in this half and maybe have some kind of different plan and maybe they'll be able to get the um, first down here. Third and five for the Hawks here. Looking to try to get the Marauders to jump off sides, but it doesn't look like they're going to fall for it. And Bunniff tries to roll out again, gets wrapped up well behind the original line of, line of scrimmage, and that's going to bring up a fourth and long, and possibly the punting unit too. Yeah, it looks like that Bryson Barber just got to him again. That's going to be probably his first full sack of this game. Probably had a half sack earlier in the game. So that's a Good pressure him by there. That's Brayson Barber. It's probably going to bring him to about nine sacks on the season. That's pretty impressive, especially saying he's only they've only played about, um, of course, um, six games so far coming into this one, this being their seventh game of the season. And the Hawks did start off pretty hot this drive, but they seem to have stalled out after that Marcus injury. And a pretty low kick is going to be fielded by number 21 for the Marauders. And he has nothing but green ahead of him. Only a few people to beat, and he goes out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Yeah, that, 
That was a good kick return there, and that this one especially doesn't have any flags on this play, so that's much better there for this um, this Marcus special teams. They eliminated those flags and was actually able to get the yardage off that return. And another great punt return by the Marauders. This one finally sticking with them. No penalties bringing that one back. You know, overall, I think they're just going to settle down here. It'll be interesting to see if um, Marcus is either going to bring out um, Cole Well over here or Jackson Warren, but I think that um, they're going to bring out Jackson Warren here. So short yardage, short field here for Marcus. See if they can get an early score here in this um, second half. And if Marcus can, in fact, score here, it would be extremely good for the rest of the game for them tonight. And a quick handoff to number 15. He's going to go in for a touchdown, number 15, Gabe Espinoza. One play drive, and the Mar Marauders are now up three scores to Hebron. It looks like they're going to go for two here, going to go for a quick little play. But as I say that, they go to switch off the field for their um, PAT. Well, great call by me. <laughs> Score is now 19-0, pending the extra point. And as I say that, um, I think that they just faked the um, PAT there and they kind of just handed it off and then from behind it just hit that guy and went in for the um, two-point conversion there and played that trick little play there and was able to get this now up to a three-touchdown lead. Marcus really has been loving their trick plays tonight. Yeah, it's been amazing so far to see this Marcus offense work in all the special ways. I mean, this team is playing very good football as of late and this is just showing their pure dominance. I mean, their defense playing great, haven't gave up any points. Their offense, of course, going out there against a hard Hebron defense and putting up 21. And that was a great start of the second half. That's exactly what they needed. And as for Hebron, they needed this. They need points on this drive. Like, you're given Marcus has all the momentum. You need points in this drive because now it's a three possession game and all you got is about the second half, so. Yeah, Hebron is definitely looking for a quick score on this drive. On a chance to keep this game competitive. Yeah, you don't. As we were saying that first half, they had plenty of time, but now the clock is just ticking. You don't. You're just running out of time here. You gotta. You gotta start making plays for Hebron. Dakota Bridges still back to receive for Hebron. It'll be interesting to see if Hebron changes something up because. This offense has been stagnant as of right now, so they really got to figure something out. And Bridge is going to take it out of the end zone, trying to make something happen here. Almost breaks free, only had a few people to beat, but he gets wrapped up just shy of the 25. Marcus does say they um, picked up the ball there, but I think they're just going to calm down. So it's going to just be a first down here for Hebron in there, about the 24-yard line. Just shy of a touchback, so looks like all that effort there was for naught. And he was down, as you can see on that replay there. He did he did touch the ground before he lost possession of the ball, so of course that ball it will be going to Hebron. Bonif bobbles the snap a little bit, but manages to pass it off to Bridges. Gets about a five-yard gain on the play there. Yeah, they really got to start figuring out things here. They can't go for any more three and outs. That play will bring up second and five for the Hawks as they try to continue to force Marcus to jump off sides. Yeah, you know, they just need to settle down here. They got to make something happen. They know they do. So can't really, can't really. Um, you can only play football in the way that you can. You can't rely on the other team to make mistakes. They got to start playing their game. And the Hawks hand it off to Lane Hoth, Howard but there are flags on the play. Yeah, I think this play is going to be coming back too. So, And Hebron's first good run of the game, I think, going to be called back here for maybe holding. Yeah, it's going to be holding on Hebron. So even after their first pretty good run of the game, they're just going to get called back here. That's not what you really want to see. And Hebron, once again, going back to those cru crucial penalties taking away big drives. 
You know, those penalties have definitely been the moral of the story. Of course, that penalty earlier in the first half took away a touchdown for Hebron and took away a lot of momentum out of a lot of drives, even for both sides, really. Marcus um, should have got maybe an extra touchdown on the scoreboard right now, but of course, that's kind of the game of football. You've got to work off your mistakes. And Bunniff escaping the pocket as it collapses. And he's going to throw it away. Looks like the intended target is Micah Green. Yeah, he just didn't have anyone open. Good coverage there by the uh, Marcus secondary. It's going to bring up another th long third down here for Hebron. And the Marcus defensive line has just been terrorizing Bunniff tonight, just not letting him get anything done. Yeah, he's that D line has been great. You know, Barber and um, all of them. You even got Bardwell there, the sophomore that's done some good work tonight. Just bringing a lot of pressure, even without the only having about one and a half sacks this game. But you're still bringing pressure. You're still putting Buffin under a lot of pressure. So playing some good, good football there on the D line. And Heber now with a four wideout formation, looking to go deep. As Bunniff drops back, a quick screen pass off to Haworth. It's going to be just, maybe just enough for the first down. And I think they are going to give it to him. And they do. Haworth with the extra effort to get those extra few yards for they needed for the first down. Yeah, he just got it too. I think about like a, maybe a centimeter there to get that first down. So. Good extra effort there to get that first down for Hebron. That was much needed. Hebron still going with the four wideouts. And another quick screen to Bridges. He makes a man miss and only gets about a couple yards on the play there. Yeah, for Hebron, they really can't rely on these small plays to work throughout the whole drive. Marcus will find a way to force that third down and force another stop. So they got to find a way to either get a big play or f make some plays in open space here out of their um, – key players. And that play will bring up second and eight for the Hawks. As they seem to be sticking with that formation that they've been using. Except now they have three wideouts on the right side of the field. And Bunniff dropping back, finds a man down deep. Oh! Micah Green, the intended receiver, can't hold on. Seems to go right through his fingertips. Yeah, he was wide open too. He should have had that catch and that would have probably been a touchdown for Hebron because they, that, um, of course, the receiver had plenty of space to break free for a score, but it's gonna bring up another long third down for Hebron. They gotta make something happen here again. They can't keep having these third downs. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they come out with again. And I believe that is not the first time that a receiver has dropped a pass that they probably should have caught tonight. You know, plenty of passes that should have should have been caught. I know that some have been on the quarterback, but you got to make those catches sometimes. And Bunniff rolling out to his right again. Finds a man, but he's tackled down short of the first down, it seems. I think they're going to... Oh, they are going to give it to them, however. I think that was a little closer, especially closer than the last one, but I guess they're going to give them forward progress. And another close third down conversion is going to give the Hawks another set of first downs. Bunniff with another screen pass to Haworth. Haworth gets, gets the first down and then some. Good chunk of yardage there. And Hebron seems to finally have gotten into their own groove here. Yeah, they're trying to. They're going with these quick passes, and getting a lot of open space. They're letting their good players in space actually work in the space now, and they're actually moving down the field on Marcus. They had, of course, had those couple close calls on third down, but they're still moving the ball downfield. So definitely be interesting to see how Marcus' defense reacts here. And Hebron definitely likes this formation they've been using, bringing out four wide receivers each play, and once again thrown to Micah Green. Just can't reel it in. Yeah, that was going to be way off target there, and I'm pretty sure if Micah Green didn't tip that ball away, that that um, number two on Marcus um, 
Jake Bart Baldlord would have got that ball and probably would have picked it off, but good play there nonetheless on defense to um, close up the coverage. And the incompletion on that play will bring up second and 10 for the Hawks. They've slowly but surely been making their way down the field here. And they're just going to hand it off to Haworth again. He's only going to get about a couple yards on the play there, bringing up another third and long for the Hawks. Yeah, just again, it's not going to, that run game really isn't going to work for them. It hasn't worked all night, so they really just got to keep passing the ball. I think they're just trying to run the, run the ball, just trying to keep Marcus on their toes. But at the same time, Marcus is probably thinking they only can move the ball on us if they throw the ball. So they got to be looking past here, especially on third and long. And they, they're still sticking with that formation. Three wideouts on the right and only one on the left. As Bunoff drops back to pass, he finds his man, number three, Kobe Baldwin. And it looks like they are going to give him the catch, but are they going to give them the first down? It looks like they're going to mark him just short. Yeah, good catch nonetheless, though. But they're, of course, going to go for it here. They almost have to. You can't really punt the ball away in this situation. But you got to think back to earlier in the game where Marcus had the same exact situation, a short fourth, fourth down, and they made the stop. So see if Heburn does anything different this time around. Yeah, like you said, it's it's too far for a field goal, but it's too short to punt. So it seems like the only logical option is to go for it. And number 14 takes the snap this time, Micah Green, and he's going to run for it and gets the first down. Yeah, they had Buffin set up as a wide receiver there, their actual quarterback. And then they just had Micah Green just take the snap and just run the ball through. So that was a little bit of a trick play there, but it worked nonetheless for this Hebron offense as they're slowly moving the ball down the field. They still got about a solid 25 yards to go and about four minutes left here in this third quarter. They're slowly but surely making their way down, but I don't think that at this pace they can reasonably come back. I feel like the next drive they're definitely going to have to pick up the pace if they want a chance. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to move things quicker because taking this time they've taken about almost six minutes already off the clock, and if you think that three, you still got to get two more touchdowns through. That's about 12 minutes, and then you know you still got Marcus to get the ball, and your defense still has to play no score no matter what. And Lay Lane Hallworth with the carry gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, bringing up a second and ten. Yeah, see if Marcus can make a stop here. They know for a fact that they're going to have to still make three more stops because we know Hebron's going to go for it. They can't really take field goals in this late in the game. And Bunniff back under center. Drops back to pass. Looking for the end zone. Micah Green once again drops the ball that he probably should have caught. Yeah, it would have been a hard catch nonetheless, but still... Michael Green seems to be a little shaken up, but he seems to be fine. But still a hard pass to make, but a good throw there by Buffin. Just overall a good play on both sides, but should have really made that catch there. But nonetheless, it's going to be another long third down. But of course, I would assume that Hebron's going to go for it again. And the long third down again. The Hawks have been able to, con to convert on these long third downs, but when eventually... Their luck's got to run out. As Bunniff takes the snap and a quick screen pass to Ware. He's going to get them the first down, but there is a flag on the field. And it looks like there's an injured Marauder, too. Oh, never mind. He got up. See what they're going to call here. It might even be the face mask here on this tackle here. He kind of just grabbed the head and pulled it down. So I. Maybe that it's probably where the flag's coming in. We'll see what they say. I can only assume it's that face mask. And the penalty was on the Marauders as the Hawks get another first down. And the story of this game really has just been penalties. Each team has had quite pro probably too many penalties. Yeah, quite a few on each side. Just bad miscues so sorry this game has been penalties but of course Marcus has played the better game with the penalties on their side so but of course Hebron is in the red zone here so they actually have a chance to score it's probably the first time they've actually had a legitimate chance to score in this game and Haworth with the carry once again gets stopped at the line of scrimmage run game really has not been working for the Hawks tonight 
but they still insist on trying it. Yeah, I think it's more of not so much to gain yardage, but to keep Marcus on their toes to be prepared for a run at basically any time, you know? They're just trying to keep Marcus to be wary if it's still going to be a run or a pass, even though I'm sure Marcus is always thinking that it's probably going to be a pass most of the time. And the Hawks with the four wide out. Bunniff drops back to pass. Finds Bridges in the open field. And Bridges is in for the touchdown. And that's the Hawks' first touchdown of the night. Yeah, just found him over the middle and he broke a few tackles. Just a good pass. Good setup there. But nonetheless, it's going to be about a, almost a nine-minute drive. Not a nine-minute, but about an eight-minute drive overall. Just a long drive there by Hebron to get down the field and get that score. This is going to be a big drive for Hebron. Score is 6-21, to 21, pinning the extra point. And like you said, that was a quite a lengthy drive. And if Hebron wants a chance to come back and win this, they cannot take that, lot, that much time on each of their drives. Yeah, they're still down two possessions. And, you know, you're still down two possessions. you still got to defend Marcus two more times. And you only got about 14 minutes and a half left in this game. So definitely interesting to see how it pans out. They're definitely going to look for a turnover on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Hebron's definitely going to be looking for their defense to make a big stop on this next drive. But good overall for this Marcus defense. They held Hebron scoreless for almost three-fourths of this game. They just kind of, Hebron's kind of find, finally finding a way to score against them, but they're still maintaining it because Hebron can't keep that pace up. They have to go quicker on offense if they want any chance to win this game. You almost wonder if they're going to risk going with an onside kick on this kickoff just to see if they can get the ball back faster. Yeah, I think it's either going to be this time or when, if they get the ball back, if they score again, they're definitely going to go for it then. But I wouldn't be surprised if they go for a little risky play here and just try to make something happen. Number six, Ashton Kozar back to receive for the Marauders. Yeah, Kozart has some pretty good wheels on him, so you definitely got to watch out for him, and Marcus's special team has had two pretty good returns, so definitely wary for Hebron. And the Marauders are going to take this and field it, almost botch the snap there. And a sneaky handoff to number three is going to put the Marauders in excellent field position. Yeah, that's Chance Sauter there. I think that... I think what happened is that he just kind of handed it off there at near like the five yard line to see what happens, but. There is a field, there is a flag on the field. Yeah, it's gonna be blocking the back on Marcus. That's another key flag on special teams. So even after the tricky plays by Marcus, it's still gonna be a block in the back and they're still gonna have to go all the way back to about their five yard line probably. Now that was an excellent play. Now what I think happened there was, I did see Cozart of uh, bobbled the, the ball a little bit, and I think that's when uh, uh, number three on the Marauders, Chance Sauter, came over and snagged the ball up. Yeah, so even though it didn't count, it was still a pretty good play nonetheless, working off uh, miscues. Definitely something you don't see very often, like playing good off those miscues, but even after that flag, Marcus has to keep this ball here for a very long time. they got to get the ball going into the fourth quarter. They have to have possession still. They need to kill as much time as they can. Yeah, it's definitely time for the for the Marauders to start chewing, chewing a little bit of clock on these drives. Yeah, but you have to think if they kill enough clock and they score here, this game is all but done here tonight. And Warren just hands it off to Wells again. About two yards on the play there. Yeah, just prepared for runs here. They're definitely going to kill the clock here and just not really worry about going too fast. I'm sure they're going to take this into the fourth quarter. And now just under two minutes left in the third quarter as the Marauders gear up for a second and eight. Warren with another handoff to Wells, and he's going to get stopped well behind the line of scrimmage. Probably going to go back to the original line of scrimmage and gearing up for a third and long. 
Yeah, I'm sure that's not what they wanted. They're definitely gonna have to go for a pass now and barring stopping the clock here, but they really need this first down. A first down here would be huge. And now that Kozar comes out on the field, I wouldn't be surprised if they target him since he, right now he is in the slot. So I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe run a slant here over the middle. And like you said, they do pass the ball. And Kozar is running a slant, but they actually chuck it off deep or short to Connor Vaughn, the tight end. Yeah, they still get the first down. So nonetheless, it does work out for Marcus there. Yeah, Kozart was almost like triple covered um, deep downfield there. So Connor Vaughn was basically wide open and got the legs enough to get about two yards past that first down. So that's a huge first down there. You scare me with your predictions sometimes. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be like the next Tony Romo here. So we might as well try. <laughs> but they're probably going to have one more play here, and then they're just going to take it into the fourth quarter. And they hand it off to Wells once again. Only gets about two yards on the play there. Yeah, but I'm sure that will just take it into the fourth quarter here for Marcus. We'll see what they want to do. Yeah, they don't seem to have any urgency to get a playoff as they start walking off the field. Yeah, but nonetheless, Hebron does get back into this game a little, gets that score, but if Marcus can keep pushing the ball downfield here, that it's going to kill a lot of time off the clock for Hebron, and they still got to get two scores and stop Marcus one more time. So at the end of the third quarter, score is Marcus 21, Hebron 7. We'll be right back after the break. And welcome back to the Ellison and broadcast of the Marcus Marauders versus the Hebron Hawks. As we come back, the Marauders hand off the ball to Wells for another short game, bringing up about third and five. They're yeah, gonna be a little bit hard of a third down here, but they did convert on the last one, so they gotta get this first down here. If they can just keep getting these small little runs and then the, um, those quick third downs, and just convert on that, they'll be able to kill this clock as much as they need to. This is a big third down for the Hawks here. If they get a stop here, they have another chance to go down and score. The but, however, Warren does find Dallas Dudley open for the first down. Yeah, Dudley just went, we're in a quick little, he went up and then he just went out to the bench side over there and he just was really open. It was a man-to-man -man coverage, so Dudley was wide open to make that play. So another first down here for Marcus. And the Marauders, with another quick play, hand it off or pass it off to Dudley again for a game of about five. Trying to keep Hebron on their toes here. They might even try to mix it up, maybe even go for another score because another score here all but closes it out. They're not going to have much time if they do get a score here to get down the field and score about three touchdowns here for Hebron. Just under a minute gone here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Marcus looks to be back to taking their time. Second and about five for the Marauders here. As they bring out a three wide out set. Fake the handoff. Warren escaping the pressure. Goes down at the original line of scrimmage. 
Yeah, he um, he escaped about two guys there, and he just couldn't escape the rest as they all started to close on him. But it's going to be another long third down here for him. Mark, see what they have in store this time around since they converted the last two third downs. And the sack on that play gives the Hawks a loss of five, bringing up a third and ten. And again, another big third down for the Hawks here. Yeah, they need this stop here because they need to put their offense back on the field. Ebron has not been very good this night uh, defending on third downs. As Warren chucks it down deep, well overthrown for the intended target, number six, Ashton Cozart. And Cozart hold, holding his wrist. Seems okay, though. Yeah, just maybe a little shaken up on the play, but that, that is a big stop there for Hebron as they are going to get their offense back on the field. It's going to look like they're going to have about 9 minutes and 42 seconds to work with to get two touchdowns in here. You almost expect Marcus to try to pull one over on him, but looks like it, they're not going to. And Hebron is going to field this ball and get it back to about the 33-yard line. You know, this is a big possession here. They can't do what they did last drive and kill six minutes off the clock and try to get try to get that score. They need to be quick here because if you kill too much time, you're going to get Marcus the ball back with like four minutes, and they're just going to be able to run the clock out. Now there is a flag on the field after the play. But the Hebron offense is still coming out. So uh, looks like there was a block in the back on... Hebron, so they are going to get taken back a few yards. Yeah, that's another huge penalty there because that's just longer to game for this Hebron offense, and they haven't been able to get that those long plays. They've only had like about only one play that's gone over 30 yards of scrimmage almost. So they've basically their whole last drive on their scoring drive has just been short, quick passes. Hebron now at their own 24-yard line, getting ready for. 76 yard drive for a touchdown as Bunniff just gets a quick pass off to Baldwin. Gets a good chunk of yards there, about six on the play. You know, they're just, maybe they're, they're going back to those quick little passes, but we'll see how it fares if they need to keep the, they need to keep moving because you take too much time off, as I said, they're just not gonna be able to come back in this game. Gain of nine on the play will bring up second and one for the Hawks. And you're absolutely right. They knew they do need to start picking up the pace here if they want a chance. I think Coach Brazel for Cuban is talking to the ref here about something. Looks like Coach Brazel is not happy about something. Yeah, now as the head and ref here is going over to the Marcus side now to talk about something. Can't quite tell what they're discussing here. Seems all but settled right now about something. It might have just been something that the coaches were confused about, but seem to be going back to play here. And after that odd break, the Hawks get ready to take on a second and short as Bunniff hands it off to Ware. He's going to fight for the yards, and I think he might be just short of the first down. Might, I think they, yep, they just singled that he probably just got a like half an inch enough to get that first down. Did he? I think they're just going to call it third down in like a centimeter. It seems that. Well, no, they are moving the chains. Seems like even the chain gang was a bit confused there. But another short run will get Hebron. A fresh set of downs to play with. He's got about nine minutes left, and they still got about three fourths of the field to go. Bunif with a beautiful pass.
to Micah Green, who finally makes a catch. Gets Hebron another first down. Yeah, it's a big pass there. If they start making those passes and making them efficiently, they'll be able to get downfield much quicker than those short passes that they like to do. And a bit of a late hit on Green there, but no call from the refs. Hawks are now at the 50-yard line. A little under eight minutes left to go. Bunniff drops back to pass again. Trying to escape the pressure. Looks like he's going to scramble for it, and he's just going to walk out of bounds. About two yards on the play there. You know, that was the smartest play he probably could have made. Instead of staying in the pocket there and taking a sack, he actually runs out and just gains a couple more yards for his first team. Definitely one of the smartest plays he's, he's made tonight. Clock is stopped at 8 minutes, 53 seconds. Hawks get ready for a second and long. Yeah, they're going to try to gain some yardage back here. And Bunniff, once again, trying to escape the pressure, fumbles, fumbles the football. Ball, ball, ball. And the ball keeps moving. As Barber seems to recover it here for Marcus. And they're going to say and it looks like that Mar he has the ball. Marcus did, in fact, recover the fumble. Yeah, it just seems that just a hit from behind by Emmerich Dop Dopanon. Just hits him from behind, and he loses the ball on this. Just a bunch of... Jumping on top of the ball, but nobody got to the recover until Barber picks it up. That is going to be his third, his second fumble recovery of the season so far. And a big turnover by the Hawks there. Might have just sealed their fate for tonight. Yeah, that was a big turnover. And now Marcus is going to go back to just killing the clock, and they get the ball at the Hebron's 39 yard line. Because Cole Welliver comes back out for the uh, Marcus offense at quarterback. And they're just going to hand it off to Espinoza as he has nothing but green grass ahead of him. And another one play drive touchdown. Just so much green space in front of him. I don't know what, what was going on with Hebron's defense right there, but just a bunch of green grass in front of him. Nobody was covering the middle of the field for Hebron's defense. And Espinoza just had plenty of room to run. That will be his second touchdown of the night as Marcus is going to go up back by three possessions here and all but seal this game tonight. Scores now 27 to seven, pending the extra point. Now Heron is in desperation mode as the kick is good. Yeah, that's gonna all but seal it tonight. That's gonna be another three possession game. And it's just gonna be all but done and this homecoming game isn't going that well for Hebron, but for Marcus, on the other hand, they're playing some good football, and they're beating a really good Hebron team that's playing hot as of recently. So this is good for Marcus going into games against Louisville they have coming up. On the Looks like the flag bearers are just rubbing it in now as they dance around the Hebron center field logo. Just having some fun with it, I guess. Utter disrespect. You know he ring players can't be happy about that. Yeah, they can't really be happy about a lot tonight. A lot of miscues on everything, really. It's just just not that clean of football. And this is definitely not the football that Coach Brazel wanted to be played tonight. Definitely not the football that you've seen from um, um, Hebron over the past um, four district games. And now Hebron getting ready to receive the kick. And this ball is high and long, but Bridges is gonna take the ball out of the end zone and get a good chunk of yardage, brings it up to about the 26. Uh, about as good as a touchback there. Probably should have just let it go out of the in zone and save a few precious seconds on the clock there. Yeah, this is just 
pretty good game overall, but Marcus has been the other team. There is going to be a flag on the return here. It's going to be holding on Hebron. So they're going to be back even further now. It seems that now just every kickoff slash punt, Hebron has a holding call. Yeah, it's just everything's going down he hill for Hebron. After that fumble, it's just been not the best football so far, but they were playing well in the second half until they had that fumble. It's just not been the best since. And another botched snap, and Bruniff is just going to throw that out of bounds. <laughs> As Marcus is now having fun since I think one of their coaches caught that ball and they were all pumped up that he made that catch. Marcus is have, just having fun with this game right now. They all but know that they've won this game. They just got to basically close it out here against Hebron's um, offense. And Bruniff, Bruniff obviously upset that he fumble that snap there is that'll bring up a second and long as Bunniff drops back to pass looking for an open man tries to escape the pocket all day to throw and finds bridges for the first down yeah, that's gonna keep the ball in play though so after the move the chains clock will keep ticking and a great effort there by Bunniff to keep the play alive, finding the open man. Yeah, he was just commanding his receivers downfield to find some open space, and he made a good throw. Bunniff still obviously not counting the Hawks out of this game. Yeah, he still feels like that they have a chance in this game. And a quick screen pass is going to be incomplete for the Hawks. Intended receiver. Looks like number 11, Case Holleron. Or I'm sorry, uh, number 22, Lane Haworth. Yeah, I just don't think he saw that ball in a quick enough time, so he just didn't get his hands on it. And the incompletion there will bring up a second and 10 for the Hawks. With just under eight minutes left to go in the game. You know, they're basically just going to go pass, pass, pass here. They're just going to get downfield and get a quick score and hope that they can come back in this game. And a deep pass is well overthrown. I believe the intended target there was Dakota Bridges once again. Yeah, they got about going to be a third and ten now. It's going to be very hard for this Hebron team to ha find anything to happen here. It's getting late in this game, and they just really don't have much right now. And another long third down for the Hawks here. Before the fumble uh, last drive, they were doing pretty good on third downs. Let's see if they can keep that going on this drive. Yeah, before that fumble, they looked like they might have had a chance to come back in this game, but now that's just all in the rearview mirror, and it just seems to be coming apart here for Hebron. And Bunniff fakes the handoff and finds Micah Green wide open. Gets another first down for the Hawks as time continues. Tick down about seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. And Hebron has really got to start picking up the pace here if they still want a chance of winning. Yeah, they're just not making those long plays that I feel like you need to make at the end of the game here. It's just really been turnovers and flags for this Hebron team are the reason why they're not in this game right now. And another good pass by Bunniff will get the Hawks another first down. Number 11, Case Holleron, with the reception there. That was his first of the night. Hawks now in Marcus territory. Slowly but surely driving down the field with about 7.15 left in, in the game. Yeah, they, still, they don't really have much time to come back in this game unless they go end zone right here, but they won't as... Bunniff's going to run the ball, and he's just going to get down, and this is going to continue. The clock is just going to continue to roll. So, Seven minutes and counting as Bunniff does get about three yards on the play there. We're bringing up second and seven. Yeah, I really just think this is just that, this, just a drive at this point. It doesn't really have any meaning to the game at this point. But this Hebron offense does look – this it did look a lot better in this um second half than it did in the first half, and – 
if you just took away that fumble they had, they might have been able to come back in this game. Bunniff rolling out to his left, trying to find a man downfield, and gets grabbed by the back of his neck. Surprised that isn't a horse collar tackle. He does manage to get away, to get the ball away, however. So that will stop the clock with about six minutes and 30 seconds left and bring up a third and seven for the Hawks. Yeah, I just don't really know what they're going for right now. They seem to be going short and then they go long. It's just kind of hard to pick out what Coach Braswell's trying to do with this offense right now. Probably gonna go try to go end zone here if they don't, if their old line can hold up long enough. Bunniff chucks it down deep. Well overthrown for his intended receiver, Bridges once again. That will bring up fourth and seven. At this point, I feel like the Hawks almost have to go for it. Yeah, they have to go for it or this game is all but over. And at this point, it almost is all but over, but it'd be fun to see what they bring out here. Maybe you see a little, maybe some kind of like trick play to see what would happen or try to, Coach Brodger might even be trying to get this offense to have some momentum to take into the next game so they don't just feel down about how they played tonight and can bring some momentum into the next game. Four wideouts for the Hawks once again. A low snap for Bunniff. Rolling out to his left, escaping the pressure. There is a flag on the play as the intended target, number 11, Case Holleron, was unable to pull in the, the ball. Yeah, it just looks to be that's probably just a holding flag there. There's a lot of there's a lot of holding it looked to be going on there at that against that D line of Marcus. So. And it was holding on the Hawks. Now we'll bring up a turnover on downs and give Hebron a few extra yards to start the drive. I'm just going to assume that Marcus is going to just kill the clock here, just kind of run the ball out. They don't really got to do much else. Marcus will get the ball at their own 45 yard line with six minutes and 16 seconds left in the game. Yeah, but this Marcus offense has looked great tonight. They, even barring those penalty flags, penalty flags they had with taking away touchdowns or even drives, if they can just take those away coming into these, this, the next big game against Louisville, they can just play some good football and they can go out there and win and maybe even have a chance at even taking districts this year, even after that little bit of a slow start against losing that game to Flower Mound. And a handoff to Espinoza, bring up second and nine. And the Hawks not calling a timeout, keep the, let the clock keep running. Yeah, this is gonna be a run out here. They're just gonna basically just, probably just keep running the ball and just let the clock run out. And another handoff to Wells. He's gonna get a good chunk of yards, about five on the play. We'll probably bring up the third and four. Yeah, he's gonna get the clock about to the 450 mark until they run another play, and they'll probably bring it down close to the start of three minutes there after the end of this drive if they don't get a first down. And the Hawks just not bothering to call their timeouts. They're just gonna let the clock keep running down. Yeah, there's really no chance for them to come out, come back in this game, barring any sort of miracle or anything like that. As the Marauders hand it off again, there is a flag on the play. Looks like it might have been on the Marauders. And it was, it was a false start on the Marauders. That will bring them back close to the original line of scrimmage. See if they just go back to passing the ball here so that they can maybe get the first ball and just keep possession so they don't risk anything here. Looks like the Marauders might actually be throwing it, and they are. 
Warren looking deep. And the intended receiver, Ashton Kozar, looks like he got tripped up. The Marauders are looking for a pass interference flag, but I don't think they're going to get one. Yeah, so they're just going to bring out the punt team. I don't know. That maybe wasn't the smartest play there. I think it was might have been better if they just got the completion so they could have kept the clock running. But nonetheless, they're going to punt the ball back here and basically just going to be kind of kill the clock time no matter what here. Heber might try to go down there and score, but we'll see what happens. Number 22, Lane Haw Haworth back to receive for the for the Hawks. A high kick is going to go out of bounds. And it looks like number 27 and 19 on the Hawks and Marauders have a little bit of a personal rivalry going on. It looked like number 27, G.J. Stevenson tripped up number 19 on the Marauders. Uh, Seth Sanchez, just for fun. be interesting to see if Heburn just comes out here just maybe run the ball they're trying to kill some clock or they'll actually go downfield and see what happens here I feel like coach Brazel isn't the type of person to take a loss lying down so I feel like he's gonna go all out for this final drive yeah he's gonna try to go down deep and Bunniff finds his man number 11 Case Holleron again he's having his moment to shine in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Marcus kind of just give him the open space, but not let him get anything too deep. I don't think Marcus is too worried about giving up any field goals. They're really just worried about giving up touchdowns. So they're trying to they're let him give space, but not too much space. Bunif to holler on once again, just short of the first down. We'll bring up about second and two and stop the clock since he went out of bounds. Yeah, you got about four minutes left here. They're kind of driving down the field a little. Probably just going to go back to the pass like they have. They're probably just going to keep running that same sort of play concept and keep trying to get out of bounds. Bun if trying to escape the pressure. He's going to get sacked well behind the line of scrimmage. Going about all the way back to the Hebron 45. Now that was Jake Jun there again. And then, of course, Bryson Barber again there on the sack. They're probably just another sack there for Bryson Barber. He's having one really good game once again. I just add into his sack total this so far this season. Clock is still ticking, three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game. Third and forever for the Hawks. Bunniff finds number 14, Micah Green. And there are flags down on the field. It looks like there's a little bit of a brawl going on on the sideline. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that just that late there, hit there by Aiden Carpenter by Marcus to just just got him and just hurt him. Just way too late of a hit there. Just not that smart of a play. You're up already. You shouldn't be making those kind of mental miscues. Hopefully that Hebron player on the sideline is okay. And there it, the penalty is on Marcus for that late hit. And it is Mike Green the injured Hawk on the sideline. His teammates gathering around him, making sure he's okay. Three and a half minutes remaining in the game as the Hawks get ready for a first and 10. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. They're kind of... Yep. And Bunniff once again finds Chase Holleron, or I'm sorry, uh, Br Dakota Bridges, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. And that will bring up the score to 13-28, pinning the extra point. 
Yeah, just a good athletic play there overall. Just well played there by Bridges. Found some open space and made a good athletic play to run into the space and get into that corner of the end zone. But still, Marcus is going to get that ball back there and just kind of just run out the clock. So kind of just a touchdown there for the for keeping that momentum there for Coach Prizel's team probably, just making sure they keep their heads up overall. Kick is up, and it is good. So score now, Marcus 28, Hebron 14, with just over three minutes left to go in the game. And at this point, uh, Hebron's like all but gonna do a an onside kick for this next kickoff. Yeah, they'll probably go for it, see what happens. You know, you still got plenty of, you still almost have enough time to come back in this game if you do get two back-to-back -back onside kicks. The likeliness of that happening are very low, but it could be entertaining to see what happens. Now both teams coming back out onto the field. And you can see even Marcus knows that it's probably going to be an onside kick. Yep, they're setting up on both sides just so they can cover as most ground as they can. you got to remember that the ball has to go 10 yards before Hebron can touch the ball. Yeah, yeah, either 10 yards or Marcus must touch it first. As the ball goes far back, but it is going to go out of bounds. Hebron almost recovered number 28, Travail Jones. The good pursuit, but just not there in time. And yeah, that's gonna get the Marauders the ball at their own 40 yard line. Yeah, it took a really weird bounce there and almost worked out for Hebron, but now it's all but done here as Marcus is probably just gonna come out here and just run the ball probably three times and then take at least two minutes off the clock, depending on a first down. But if they do get a first down here, the game is basically all but done. And the Marauders now just hoping for a miracle, maybe like a botched snap or an accidental fumble. Yeah, but for Marcus on their side, they're probably just going to play it smart. Make sure if you are handing it off that the running backs aren't running, just holding it with one hand, maybe just holding it with two hands. Mate, just keeping that ball safe no matter what. And it is a handoff to Espinoza. Only gets about two yards on the play there. Probably going to bring the clock down to about two minutes and 40 seconds until they're probably going to run their next play here. Still no timeouts from the Hawks head coach. As there's now less than three minutes left in the game. Yeah, of course, as now Marcus is just going to run this clock out. Marcus is taking their sweet time. And another handoff to Espinoza. Has plenty of room, and he is going to get tackled out of bounds after getting Marcus the first down. Yeah, I think he just saw a bunch of open space there. I think he wanted to stay in bounds, but I think he ultimately just kind of just got pushed out there. But it looks like the clock is going to continue ticking down as he did not go out of bounds of his own out of his own volition. Now only two minutes remaining left in the game. Yeah, that clock's going to keep ticking, and Marcus now has all four downs to work with. So Marcus basically just going to start kneeling this one out sooner rather than later. And there is a penalty on the Marauders. Might have been a delay of game. 
That's going to stop the clock and bring the Marauders back a few yards. That will bring up first and 15 for the Marauders. Even then, this game is just just basically over, but all in all, a really good game for Marcus. Really showed up tonight and really played a great game all, all around. And another handoff to Espinoza. Gets about three yards on the play there. And it looks like the Hawks are finally using their timeouts here as they use their, the first of their three to stop the clock here. Yeah, Coach Brosnan won't go down without a fight, so he's really – that's the type of coach he is. He won't just give up, as you said earlier, so – it's going to continue to fight here, but for Marcus, they're probably just going to continue to run this ball. Really just working on getting one more first down because after that, after one first down, is really going to end this game. And we're going to bring you guys back inside the booth for tonight's game wrap-up. So all in all, Marcus and Hebron both had quite a few penalties tonight, but it seems that Marcus was just able to fight through those penalties a lot better than Hebron was. Yeah, those penalties really got to Hebron. They, had a, they could have had a touchdown early in that first half, maybe gained some momentum if they didn't have that flag. So, you know, it's just you got to keep – you got to work on your mistakes and just work better as a team coming into that next game. I'm sure Coach Brazel is going to talk to him and tell him that they could have won that game if they didn't have all those flags. So I'm – Sure, they're just going to continue to work on that. And another handoff to Espinoza will bring them back to about the original line of scrimmage. And it looks like the Hawks are calling their second of the three timeouts that they have. So what's next for both of these teams? Well, both teams are still very likely to make the playoffs. Uh, they are both 4-0 in district. Hebron about to now be 4-1 and Marcus about to be 5-0 uh, and o, along with Louisville. Yeah, these both, this Marcus team definitely came out strong here. They're playing much better as of late, especially coming off um, some key losses overall. And this is really what Marcus really needed. Um, they needed to come in here, and they needed to win this game. They knew how big of a game it was on both sides. Of course, this being the homecoming game for Hebron, and it's a big staple game if they could have won this game. But for Marcus, they played some good football and they, um, they just showed how dominant they can be, and that's really what they need to do. Lu Louisville is now the only uh, undefeated team in the 6A district. Next week, um, Hebron is playing. Louisville will um, be playing Marcus, so that will be a big game. Of course, that will be the Battle of the Axe, so that's going to be a 5-1 and one district. Um, that will be a... A four and one Marcus team, of course, and then that five and zero um, Louisville team as they came out with the win tonight. So that's going to be a really big game, and if Marcus can come out winning that game, it'll be it'll be huge for them overall and for that. And of course, on Louisville's side, if they can come win that game, they for sure lock up their spot in the playoffs, and for sure lock up their spot as a top team in the playoffs. And in about two weeks, uh, Ellis and Men will be broadcasting the Hebron versus Louisville football game. So we hope you all join us here for that game as well. That should be a fun time. Yeah, that should be a fun time. We'll see what happens next week with Marcus and Louisville and see what happens, what type of game that will be, see if Hebron wins their game next week. Because if you think about it, if Louisville loses and then Hebron comes into the next game, they win. They will be both. Um, they will both have solid records in districts. So that will be another huge game for playoff implications. And it looks like the Marauders are – going to be punting it here on fourth down so it looks like the Hawks will be able to get one more possession even though they have no timeouts left to use. And a very straight kick will go out at the Hebron nine yard line. Yeah, this game is basically all but over. It's kind of just waiting Basically, players are just waiting for this one to be over. But, of course, of course, Braz is going to keep this game going as long as he can. So that's kind of his spirit. He won't give up until 
basically that clock is hit, hits zeros in the fourth. Yeah, it's not over till the fat lady sings. Yeah, that's probably one of his favorite quotes. And the Hawks will get the ball at their own nine yard line. They have a 91 yard drive ahead of them if they do want a chance here. And Brunt Bunniff rolling out to his right. And a short pass will be caught just past the first down markers. Yeah, that's going to stay in bounds, though, so the clock will keep moving. We'll be about minute, a little over a minute left as Brunniff rolls out to his left now and tries to find Kate, Case Holleron. But the ball is dropped, so that will stop the clock. But bring it will bring up a second and ten for the Hawks. At this point, it's more of a Coach Braswell trying to send a message to his team to never really give up and just to keep fighting no matter what the score is. So I think that's a good coaching move by him and really trying to lead his players in the right direction, not only for football but for life too. That's going to be a good aspect in their life if they can just keep that going. And another deep pass by Bunniff will be just shy of the first down marker. Just shy of one minute left in the game as the Hawks come up for a third and two. As Bunniff drops back to pass, finds a man down deep. Number three, Kobe Baldwin, the intended receiver, just a bit too high for him there. That will be an incomplete pass. Yeah, going to be a short fourth down here. I'm sure it'll go for it, but we'll see what happens here. And the Hawks get ready for this fourth and two drive. And a quick short pass is instantly stopped, but it looks like they will get the first down. And the clock will continue moving. You know, just a quick pass, trying to keep this game alive as long as they possibly can. Bunniff looking to the sideline, and a big catch by Holleron. He's been having quite quite a showing this fourth quarter. Yeah, he's been a bright spot for this Hebron offense. That's one thing they're probably going to look into. Just keep using him. He's been good with catching that ball. That was a really hard pa pass to catch. So Now less than 30 seconds left remaining in the game as, he, as Bunniff goes back to Holleron. He gets a good chunk of yards, gets into Hebron or uh, Marcus territory and goes out of bounds to stop the clock with a little less than 20 seconds remaining. seconds left now this is just trying to keep that spirit alive for Heward Bunniff dropping back finds Holleron again in the middle of the field and the clock will keep moving 10 seconds remaining on the clock and Hebron will spike the ball with eight seconds left. And at this point, Hebron's just trying to make the score seem a little bit closer than it really was. Yeah, they're just, if you look at this game on the scoreboard, and if it does end up 28 21, I'm sure. I'm sure Marcus will tell a lot of different stories when they go back to their school on Monday or any type of thing right now. It's going to look like at this end of the game that he even played a much better second half, but Marcus really has been dominating this whole game. They've kind of just let off the gas a little here at the end of the game. And Bunniff rolling out to his right, looking for the end zone. Pass is tipped up, 
and falls flat on the ground for an incompletion. And that will be the end of this game. Marcus 28, Hebron 14. We thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope to see you again in two weeks as we bring you uh, Hebron versus Louisville. For all of LSMN, I'm Brody Lewis alongside my partner Brendan Selke. We th thank you all for watching and hope you have a good night. This broadcast of LSMN is being brought to you by Texas Roadhouse in Flower Mound. Come by for our hand cut steaks, legendary sides, and fresh baked bread. We're open till 11 o'clock, so stop by after the game. Texas Roadhouse, legendary food, legendary service.